Right, well, I'm going to go ahead and do is open up a work session uh, regarding uh, this morning's public hearing. So we'll open up the work session. And colleagues, the staff uh, have prepared three possible motions for us to consider, not saying any of them will fit or do what any of us might want to do individually or what we might want to do as a group. There's also, as I handed out to each of you, an alternative motion one, uh, which I've put together based on my review of uh, information that has come to me uh, regarding this and kind of a hybrid of one of the motions that was be, uh, suggested uh, for consideration um, by the staff for us to look at. So what I'd like to do is to open it up for, uh, as I said, work session for individuals to maybe express where they're at instead of trying to run through motions, because first of all, I assume, uh, like, um, uh, like most of these um, motions, that they're new to you as individuals, and so I want you to have an opportunity to review them. And so I think what I would like to do is just start with, uh, uh, I'm going to start with, Ms. Uh, with Senator Manning as to your perspective based on the information that you've heard this morning. What, if any, steps uh, do you believe that we need to be taking as a committee as it pertains to, as it pertains to us uh, uh, making any recommendations uh, regarding the report that we received. Remember, uh, our task today is not to be looking at the actual substance or merits of any uh, report that has been made as to it becoming a complaint or action as a complaint, uh, formal or informal. Uh, but instead, uh, as counsel has directed us during her testimony, uh, as an employers that the legislative branch does in fact have a duty to maintain and provide a workplace that's free of threats of violence and intimidation. And so uh, with that, Senator Manning, would you like to kind of go through where you might be and what your thoughts are regarding moving forward, if anything? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a uh, really <clears throat> avoidable, in my uh, opinion, uh, incident that we're having, but we're here right now. And I, I got to say that I have spoken with a, a number of uh, staffers and even some of the, um, uh, the people that run the building here day to day. And they have expressed to me, you know, openly that they are really concerned, you know, and uh, a number of them, to include some of our Senate colleagues, uh, have expressed concerns that this would not only uh, uh, feeling that they might be uh, under threat of physical, but also mental threat because of all the events that led up to this point. And so uh, I think where I am right now, uh, I am going to side on uh, what I feel is best for uh, the staff and uh, our colleagues. I think that there need to be some restrictions, uh, whether we have uh, escorts by uh, OSP or whether or not the senator decides that he would just stay away until this thing just uh, is, is resolved. I think those are two acceptable uh, options for me at this time. Uh, I did receive a text message from uh, another Senate colleague because everybody's watching this. And I want to be very careful uh, in how I, I say this, but people find the, uh, the threats very credible. They are nervous. And it doesn't look good for us not to do anything. Again, my position right now is that uh, a best case scenario for me would be that the uh, senator will say that, hey, I will stay away until whatever this thing is and it blows out, then we can come back and have another conversation. Or if we can't get that, uh, you know, we will have to have some kind of safeguard 
for the people that work here in this building. And I understand that uh, this is a very, very serious thing. Had I had made those comments, I believe that I would have been drug out of the Capitol at a minimum. I think that when you, you try to downplay a credible threat that uh, I didn't, he didn't mean that. When I heard it, he meant that. So I think that in fairness for everybody, those would be two options right now that uh, I see based off of the information that we are looking at. And I, and again, you know, he was very direct when he said, send bachelors and make sure that they're heavily armed. There is no other interpretation of that, no matter how we try to gaslight it. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Senator Olson. This committee is kind of in a tough place. We're asked to uh, adjudicate or make a decision on something which we really don't have all the facts on, other than the fact that there were statements made. Um, I imagine all of us at some time or another has made a statement in the heat of passion that wasn't quite nice. It didn't quite fit the the confines of what normal society deals with. Um, this has been a very difficult session for all of us. Uh, it started out um, with some new rules that we instituted because of uh, a continuing, um, what's the word I want to use, environment that people have lived in and um, it's been documented and it, it became very tenuous and the pressure is quite uh, palpable. Th this is a tough one for me because I probably put my foot in my mouth many times also. Um, I would say we must be cognizant of the fact that, that Senator Boquist is an elected official and he does have, have to have the ability to represent his constituents. We can't take that away. Um, I think it would be not in good stead to have the senator come to the Capitol and be protected by an armed guard. I, I, I don't think that that is uh, as appropriate at all. Uh, I think that since we are now in um, recess, or if you will, we're, we, we won't be back to ledge days. I think that uh, maybe we can make some um, form of agreement that uh, you can conduct your business from your district office and, and keep the sanctity of the Capitol uh, so that the whole temperature of the building can cool down. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I find the report interesting and uh, appreciate the presentation we had this morning. Uh, I, I obviously saw the comments that were made by Senator Boquist. Uh, I don't uh, agree with those comments. I uh, wouldn't make those comments myself. Uh, but one thing that's lacking, and as an employer, um, when we have incidents where somebody says something, somebody does something as an employee, we interview that person. And as our attorney indicated, that normally does happen, didn't happen in this case, uh, because it was determined that these two statements kind of spoke for themselves. And I don't actually think the statements do speak for themselves because we have an individual who has spent many years in the military, and um, we don't know um, 
what his frame of mind was as it relates to what he was thinking when he was saying these statements. And uh, I don't believe at this point that there is a, uh, a threat to anybody in the Capitol. Uh, I share an office wall with Senator Boquist. Uh, so if anybody ought to be concerned, it should be me. Uh, and there are no employees, according to these statements, there are no employees uh, that were threatened here at the Capitol. And so, uh, and, and the two people <clears throat> who the alleged threats were made to aren't part of the report. They're not complainants as part of the report, that being Senator President Courtney and the Oregon State Police, as uh, the attorney indicated who made the presentation. So really what we're left with, I think, is uh, kind of an incomplete um, <coughs> hearing and uh, facts of the case. And I honestly was hoping to hear more from Senator Boquist than what his statement was. Um, but he clearly uh, is concerned about uh, significant issues, which he expressed in his uh, remarks. And so at this point, uh, I, um, I've looked over the recommendations. I can't um, support the wording of the rec recommendations as they are, uh, but I could support uh, something that is modified uh, in those recommendations. But at this point, uh, the wording of it, and some of them to me, seem to be premature and somewhat uh, prejudicial as it relates to it. Um, if there is going to be a continuing investigation, then I think we need to let that work itself out. Uh, because, uh, as I said, I do not see uh, Senator Boquist as a, um, a workplace uh, threat at this time. We are in the interim, and uh, there are very few person-to-person uh, -person meetings that go on here at this time. And there's very few interactions. And um, as I said, I share an office wall with Senator Boquist and um, all the interactions I've had with them, and we disagree on plenty. Um, I've, never, uh, I've never felt threatened and, and don't feel threatened by his, uh, his statements uh, as a member. Uh, as the chair, and in my own personal perspective, and looking at the task that we've been given as a committee, uh, the issues that we have before us is based on a report with interim findings and recommendations. What, if any, steps should we be taking? Uh, the report does, in fact, uh, reflect, as we've heard in the testimony, uh, that it was based on uh, statements that were videotaped, so they're not in uh, dispute as to what was actually said. Uh, one on the floor on June 19th uh, directed, uh, at least uh, directed toward the president based on the context whether it extend it to other members, I don't know. But it did, in fact, call out by his name and that uh, in, in relationship whether or not uh, if, if you send the state police out to get me, hell is coming to visit you personally. Without knowing exactly what uh, Senator Boquist meant by that statement, you have to take it at the, at the surface of what, uh, what it presents. Uh, as our counsel stated, the test here is not whether or not something is criminal in action uh, to be a valid threat. Uh, it is a, we're in a civil setting and it is within the employment law and within that as to the requirement and duty of the employer to provide a workplace free of uh, violence or threat of violence or intimidation, etc. Uh, so in my looking at that and then looking at the second statement that was made off the floor uh, to the media directed toward the state police uh, as to uh, uh, we, what we've heard on quotable. So here's the quote, send bachelors and come heavily armed. I am not going to be a political prisoner in the state of Oregon. Uh, that it, It's just that simple. 
Now, what we also have had is that shortly after that, uh, which is reflected in uh, posting that's on OLAS, a email that was purportedly from uh, Senator Boquist to a reporter at the Oregonian, uh, when someone had stated that that threat was thinly veiled, he made it clear that it was not. And that was, I look at those three things and I come a, a, a way that the statements that were made by the, uh, Senator Boquist were in fact credible threats. What I have difficulty though is at this point determining whether or not uh, he still poses a credible threat as he did on the 19th of June. What I want to put on the record and what we've talked about at this point is that we have had situation uh, that has, I think, been modified or has, uh, has uh, died down in the sense of uh, the angst, anxiety of when that statement was made on the 19th. Uh, Council's report to us comes a week later on the 25th of June. Since then we have had approximately two additional weeks that have occurred uh, since there and there's been no situation of uh, showing and demonstrating that whatever credible threat there were on those statements which I have stated I believe were in fact credible threats of those being per uh, uh, continued out. Uh, when you look at the context of what those statements and when they were made and what they were uh, subject matter of that we know that that question is now moot. Uh, the state police are no longer uh, being requested to uh, bring any of the members who were absent during those nine days uh, to the Capitol uh, to do their work. And so to me that is an action, that is something that has happened uh, beyond, uh, since then that uh, tells me that I believe that uh, the workplace is uh, okay. Uh, for employee uh, for the employees to be in. Uh, I do want to point out that even though uh, session has ended, we're in our interim. We do in fact have individuals who are in this building uh, five days a week working their jobs either in district uh, for senators or representatives as well as the full-time staff of the Legislative Assembly. And so I do feel that those things do need to be taken into consideration. I personally, in looking at these recommendations, uh, I came up with a alternative motion uh, that would basically, one, find that the statements of June 19th to be credible threats, but that there has been, uh, let me get the term here, uh, that the uh, recommendation of counsel at this point uh, should be modified as to what steps should be taken based on new information, testimony, and clarification uh, that has occurred uh, through the not only the hearing today, but what has happened since the uh, in incident occurred. So that's where the chair is at. I do not uh, at this point see uh, that uh, continued threat uh, that was made on the 19th to be present today within the Capitol. I do want to clarify because I've heard members say this and I think it's important for the rule, uh, for the record to reflect. Our hearing today is not going to the merits of any complaints, and let's say any reports that have been filed that could be turned into a complaint, either a formal complaint that we as a committee would be addressing or an informal complaint that would go through that internal uh, process for informal complaints. Uh, for us to <coughs> say that we need to have more information before we act on this as to more of the merits, who brought it forward, why did they bring it, is missing the point. This whole exercise that we're going through today is to ensure that the workplace is free of intimidation, threats of violence, while that investigation is ongoing, and to ensuring that everyone who comes to this capital, either as an employee, as a member, uh, as a uh, the public, someone who works in this building as a lobbyist, are all free of uh, uh, workplace intimidation or threats of violence. And so I want to make certain that we realize that at some point, it may be that we will be meeting again to look at some specific conduct uh, that will in fact uh, materialize as a formal complaint. What I know at this point is we don't know when that's going to happen or if that's going to happen because the investigation's ongoing. So with that, 
I, the position I would be taking at this point would be to acknowledge the threats that were made on the 19th to be credible for what they, uh, when they were said and what was, uh, was stated at the time and could in fact uh, cause a reasonable person in the workplace to fear for their own safety or safety of others. Uh, but at the same time, because of the t amount of time that has passed, other factors that have come in play and things that have not come into play uh, do not believe that uh, any additional steps need to be taken as it pertains to uh, Senator Boquist being in the workplace here at the Capitol. So that's where the chair's at. So uh, at this point, I don't know if anyone wants to make a motion. Uh, and then, as I stated, besides the three that uh, were uh, provided to us as reference points by staff, there is the one that I've put together, uh, which basically would move forward the statements I've just made. So let me just see if anyone wants to make any motions. And uh, co uh, colleagues, let me just take a break. For those who are here, I know that this is probably something that you've never experienced in the sense of being at a legislative hearing, let alone this type of a hearing. Uh, what we're doing at this point is having open discussion as to what, if any, motions will be made uh, for us to take any action within this uh, work session would require a motion to be before us. So with that said, I'm going to entertain any motions from any of the members. Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, and I will make a motion, but I, I want to make a comment first. Sure. There was uh, a response that went to state of mind, uh, questioning what its state of mind is. I would argue that none of us actually know that. Uh, again, I'm also looking at uh, the chance meeting of someone uh, that may encounter the senator at the same time while the, uh, the research inquiry is still going on. What would that look at, at the psychic of their mind? Uh, there are people here that have real fear. They have real fear. They have fear of physical and uh, emotional and mental uh, issues with this. So as I mentioned uh, that I will make a recommendation that uh, Senator Boquist on his own can elect to stay out of the Capitol until the inquiry is completed, or you have down here the Senate rules be temporarily modified to allow uh, the Senator uh, to remote participate uh, from a, a remote location without being in the building. That would be my uh, motion. All right, so I'm going to try to summarize that and make sure we understand your motion First of all, what I've heard was a motion as to going forward as compared to uh, the threats themselves. So let me just take that part. What I understand is that you believe going forward, uh, Senator Boquist should voluntarily uh, not enter the building uh, to perform his work as a uh, senator uh, within the Capitol, but be able to do that from locale, meaning a district office or somewhere else. Exactly. And was there something else to that portion of your motion? The uh, motion about the threats being credible, okay. uh, I find that they are credible. And uh, let's see, where is the other piece of that? Uh, I'll let them come back on that one. Let, let me ask for clarification. Uh, we have a motion that's somewhat before us now. It sounds like, number one, that the uh, threats that were made on the 19th are credible. Number two, that uh, uh, Senator Boquist uh, should voluntarily uh, not enter the, uh, the Capitol as a workplace uh, during the pendency of the investigation that is ongoing with the reports. So, Senator, what if he failed to voluntarily participate uh, at the level that you would like for him to do? What would be, what, what, where, where would that take us? That would take us, in, in looking at some of the uh, senators and staffers, uh, I think that uh, we, we open the door then to making sure that we have escorts. 
not maybe for him, but for everybody else. All right. Well, we do know that uh, there was at least a memorandum uh, by the two leaders of the chambers, the Senate president, as well as the, uh, uh, the Speaker of the House, ensuring for employees who found themselves in a situation where they thought that their presence within the, this workplace, the Capitol, in conjunction with Senator Boquist, uh, was a threat that they could, in fact, make other accommodations for them doing their work, uh, either outside of this building or maybe in some other lo location uh, and stuff. So I want to make certain that's also part of this record. So then with that, uh, Mr. Chair, that could be a lot of people. We don't know how many. That could be a lot of people. That could be so many people where we couldn't even reach a quorum unless we modify the rules or whatever we're doing. We could see uh, a lot of people, to include staff members. Uh, that, and I again, there were multiple uh, uh, reports done. I don't know what that looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, Senator Manning, you said quorum, so now I'm hearing you say something about members. Uh, you know, it, based on what I've heard from our counsel, outside counsel, at this point, whatever investigation is ongoing should be resolved before we would be back in session in February. That's our next schedule, of course, clearly if we had a uh, uh, special session called by the governor. Uh, that would bring members back together. Uh, I thought your motion was more based on the needs and desire to ensure a free work, uh, a workplace free of these type of threats and violence for staff individuals or others, let's say non-members of individuals. I think we should include members as well. Okay. All right. All right. So. Do you feel that you've got your motion out there? Yeah, you know, I, I think you, you, you phrase it the right way. You know, I, I do find the threats credible. Uh, and uh, I would ask that, uh, recommend that Senator Boquist on his own elect, uh, while the investigation or the inquiry is going on, to uh, stay out of the uh, the Capitol or, and to, or to suspend the rules, temporarily modify and allow him to participate remotely from district office. Yeah, so I, I, if you're saying having Senator Boquist be able to perform his duties as a senator as it pertains to voting for, from a different location, I believe that that is not an option. Uh, we have had conversations with legislative council regarding uh, that and that's uh, that as a possibility and if you remember on the last two days of our session uh, some of the discussions and some of the arrangements that were made to allow for uh, all members to be able to participate uh, without necessarily being on the floor at the same time but when they voted they were on the floor to vote they were not able to vote from remotely so I just want to make certain you understand that we've pretty well gone down that path as to what legislative council says is permissible for I, members. I, I completely understand and uh, well then that only leads me to the uh, to the aforementioned uh, either the senator on his own elects. Okay. So let me let me summarize. My understanding is number one that, that there's two parts of this motion. First is that the threats that were made on June 19th were credible threats. Second uh, that Senator Boquist should voluntarily stay out of the building uh, uh, until the investigation regarding the reports that are pending have been resolved. And if he fails to do so, then to have some type of uh, requirement of making uh, arrangements with the Capitol for his entry here to ensure that while he's here, uh, others who work within the building or visiting the building or whatever capacity they may be are uh, safe from any type of uh, carrying out of threats. I'm just trying to make uh, yeah, sure we know yeah. what we're going to be voting on. Yeah, that's 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 pretty much a summation. All right. Let me ask Senator Olson and Senator Conope, do you understand the motion? 
as it is for a vote. <laughs> I'm not saying agreeing or anything. I'm just saying I want to know, make sure everyone knows before we call for a vote. So generally speaking, yes. All right. Yeah, uh, generally speaking, yes. All right. Uh, Patsy, why don't you give us a, a, a roll call vote, please? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, does that motion require a second? No. Okay. I just want to <coughs> clarify. Yeah. No, not, we're under legislative rules, not parliamentary. Okay. Senator Olson? No. Senator Manning? Aye. Senator Cano? No. Chair Przonsky? No. Uh, motion fails. Any other motions from any of the members? Mr. Chair, in reading your, th if, if I may. You may. Uh, thank you. Uh, in reading your three uh, different motions that you have. All right, let me just motion. clarify. Those three motions are not mine. My, the only one I take credit for is okay. the alternative I'm motion. Sorry. <laughs> not motion one, not motion two, or motion three. Those came from staff. Let's just make sure that's on the record. Okay. Uh, in reading the motions then that not yours um, I find one uh, I find it difficult um, to make any uh, definitive uh, obligation against the senator predicated on council's um, reports because she she didn't interview the OSP she didn't interview uh, President Courtney, she didn't interview the, the people that allegedly have uh, made complaints. That concerns me. So, but in reading the motions, I, th I see an area where I think we can come to agreement on. And that would be on motion one, paragraph two, where it says, I recommend that Senator Boquist be advised that applicable law and rule 27 prohibit him from engaging in any retaliation against any employee or member who may have brought forward or reported concerns, and that Senator Boquist is to refrain from any action or retaliation against any person who participates in the process. I think at this time that paragraph fits perfectly, in my opinion. Um, it, it allows us to uh, some parameters to work with, but it tells Senator Boquist we don't appreciate the, the, the comments, but those people that are concerned about the comments, you must not retaliate against, and you must refrain from any other uh, action of retaliation against anyone who participates. That gives him the heads up that, you know, we're looking at this, but we haven't come to a conclusion yet because the report's not done, so please refrain from anything that would impair or impact any member uh, public, as you said, public uh, lobbyist uh, employee that would be impacted. I think that fits perfectly, gives him the warning that we are watching, but yet still um, allows people to understand that we see what's going on and we're waiting for the final reports. All right, discussion on the motion. Let me just ask a couple of questions, Senator Olson, regarding. Uh, your recommendation, or your motion, excuse me, is basically the boilerplate that's uh, found on all of the various motions uh, as to ensuring that going forward uh, that uh, Senator Boquist be advised as to the applicable law, Rule uh, 27, uh, for not engaging in any type of retaliatory. Uh, does not appear that your motion would include anything as to uh, making a finding or accepting the finding as to the threats from June 19. Um, I, first off, thank you for clarifying that it is on all three motions that aren't yours, by the way. <laughs> They're from staff. Uh, yes, I think I think before we make that critical decision, we have to have a completed investigation. Okay. Uh, that would that would be my opinion. All right. Uh, any other questions f uh, before we take a vote on this motion? Mr. Chair, uh, the the motion the the actual threats are enshrined uh, in film and tape, whatever media. So there is no question about what the uh, senator said and reaffirmed it. Uh, the question comes that was raised about state of mind. That will keep playing over and over again because when you meet certain people in the building 
what is his state of mind? There's an indication about talking about retaliation stuff in there. Uh, we don't know what state of mind will be. This is, I, I can't support that. Okay. All right. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a, uh, a vote on this, Patsy? Senator Olson. Yes. Senator Manning. Nay. Senator Cano. Aye. San or, I'm sorry, Chair Pozonski. No. Uh, motion fails. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion at this point, and this will be a motion that, uh, that we uh, ex uh, accept the findings of the outside counsel that Senator Boquist's statements on June 19th constituted the credible threats of violence directed at the uh, state president and Oregon State Police. I further recommend uh, that we reject the recommendations of outside counsel based on new information and testimony clarifying that Senator Boquist does not currently pose a threat to staff, public, or members of the uh, Capitol. And that I further uh, recommend that Senator Boquist be advised that applicable law, Rule 27, pro, uh, prohibit him from engaging in any retaliation against any employee or member who may have brought forward or reported concerns and that uh, Senator Boquist is to be refrained from any action of retaliation against any person who participates in the process. That is my motion from the chair, and I will open that up for discussion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to oppose that particular motion because um, Senator Boquist was not interviewed during this uh, particular um, report, uh, call it an investigation, what have you. And um, what we learned is the two people that the uh, threatening comments were made toward um, were, were not interviewed and were also not complainants in the reports. And so, well, I do agree that Senator Boquist does not currently pose a threat to staff, the public, or members in the Capitol. I can't go along with the wording that exists in the motion, and so therefore I am going to be a no. All right, Senator Manning. Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, while the, the question is out there whether or not the Senator poses a direct threat to uh, uh, members or others here in the building. Uh, uh, I would say that right now there are no other members in the building, so that would seem to be true. I'm concerned about what happens when he comes into contact. While it has no retaliation here, again, I didn't bring it up, but it was brought up about his state of mind. I don't know. I don't know what would, would uh, send a response. Uh, I agree with the with the ninety percent of your emotion, uh, but that other piece still, you know, having access to the building is going to is going to bother me. I will support this as it brought up, but we're talking about. A, an inquiry that is ongoing. Uh, I think that we're trying to rush to a conclusion when the evidence or interviews and stuff are yet to be explored. So this is an interim for me. This is an interim. How do we make sure that the workplace is safe and people feel comfortable coming to work? Uh, again, while I think that I would prefer the senator to say that, hey, I will voluntarily stay out. It's not in this, uh, um, in this part right now, but I want to make sure we keep that on the record. It is a concern of mine. And, you know, I can, with the, all of the information that you put out here, uh, I can support this. Any other comments? Yes. Senator Olson. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, this concerns me that we are rushing to a judgment, and I understand the the, uh, the weight of this of the argument, and that we have to have 
a workplace that is, is free from any intimidation, harassment, et cetera, et cetera, as we have laid out in Rule 27. <clears throat> I find it interesting that a report is made by the good uh, um, attorney without interviews, uh, without reports in hand, without documents, that a conclusion was reached and and yes the 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 statements were probably not appropriate but other people have made made statements that are similar if not more egregious than these um, and I find that it it we're trying to come to a basis of uh, uh, it's not the, the punishment's not the term I want to use, but we're trying to come to um, a level that we can guarantee safety, but we really can't because we never know when one is going to do something weird uh, or violent. And, uh, and I'm not saying that Senator Boquist would ever, ever do that. I'm just saying we never know because it's happened throughout history that people have done things that we never anticipated they would do. But to, to base a conclusion on an incomplete um, document or an incomplete report predicated on what I felt was a slight amount of bias, and, and the fact is that she's an employment attorney, and that you know, that's your job to look to see what's the best thing to do to make sure the workplace is safe. But um, it jumps to conclusions and, and casts aspersions and uh, essentially convicts before the before the uh, final report is done. So I find it difficult to support uh, your motion. All right. Any other comments? So in just response, uh, <clears throat> Senator Olson, as I've said to other members, uh, I believe that the task that we have now is what if any interim steps need to be taken while the investigation is going forward. Uh, I would not be uh, in favor of us trying to make some determination as to whether or not there's merits uh, to the underlying reports that have been filed that are currently being investigated. Uh, again, our task for this committee regarding what we have before us is regarding the workplace that we have a duty to ensure is uh, free of violence uh, threat of violence and intimidation. And it's what I thought uh, from my perspective, what I've seen, what I've heard, and what I've concluded based on multiple factors. Yes, those uh, threats were credible based on what was said, just on the uh, sheer force of the statements themselves and that interviews did not need to be taken as to uh, what was said because it was it's there. Uh, at the same time, uh, it also is my belief that because of uh, the amount of time that has passed, uh, the lack of other issues coming forward, knowing that Senator Boquist has been in the building uh, multiple times since this incident back in June 19th, uh, that I do not believe that uh, he poses a current threat as he uh, did back on the 19th of June based when the statements were made. That's why I put it forward in the way I did. So with that, we do have a motion. Is there any other comments? If not, we'll take a vote. Uh, uh, Patsy? Senator Olson? No. Senator Manning? Aye. Senator Canope? No. Chair Frizzanski? And Chair votes aye. Motion fails. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may make a recommendation. You may. Um, when uh, We Crazy 11 came back, uh, there was an enormous police presence in our building. My recommendation would be that if Senator Boquist needs to come back to the building to work, that we perhaps bolster our security force for the time that he's in the building uh, for that day to make certain that, that security and safety uh, would be maintained. And, and not, not a security guard that follows him around, but maybe just a couple extra officers to make certain that everybody feels comfortable. All right. 
So I'm going to ask the committee to uh, direct themselves to motion three. I believe what Senator Olson is uh, recommending it would be something in line with what motion three has, but maybe even more of a modification than what um, uh, it currently says. Uh, for those who are not uh, privy to what motion three says, I think it's worth putting on the record. This would be a motion that would be made. Uh, to the chair recommending modifying the recommendations of outside counsel based on new information and testimony as follows. A, require Senator Boquist to give at least 12 hours advance notice in writing to, uh, then we fill in the blank, if he intends to be in the Capitol and limit his access uh, to the following, fill in the blank there, or uh, B, uh, require Senator Boquist uh, to be escorted by the state police to his office and official meetings, or C, uh, that the Senate rules be temporarily modified to allow for remote uh, participation, or D, being a question mark. It continues with the Barler Plate language regarding not having retaliation. I will go back and just state that I believe, based on the council's uh, perspective, that we are not able to uh, temporarily modify uh, to allow for remote participation. Now, if we think that is uh, something that we would want to still include in this modified motion, we could ask council to give us and, uh, a review and opinion on that, which would mean that we would come back to uh, take that up. I would suggest that maybe that portion not be in there because the reality is we're not uh, in session. There are not votes that need to be taken. The next time that we will be scheduled for uh, any uh, action on the Senate floor will be in September. If there are, and I assume there probably will be, uh, governor's appointments and uh, that need to be ratified by the Senate. So uh, I'm wondering, S Senator Olson, Looking at that motion three, if you would be comfortable with the A and B and uh, and taking out the C. I would be more comfortable if uh, I don't have a problem with allowing us to know he's coming, uh, removing B so that he's not escorted, taking out C and adding D where it bolster OSP for us for security reasons. And then do you think that under A we have that's in there, I'm not saying that's what we need to go with, at least 12 hours advance notice would that time frame be uh, within your motion or do you think something yeah, else I, I i think it would be appropriate uh, to bring in another couple officers uh, okay. and i'd ask the rest of the committee if they thought it was also but i think that it would be appropriate uh, that he and i and i would personally say that we don't send it to uh, president courtney <laughs> i think that would, i think we might send it to the secretary of the senate so that she is, she's aware of that he's coming in, and uh, but uh, would not well, limit his access. I uh, wouldn't limit his access to the building because we'd have extra security in the building. All right, and so basically, on on the regarding that portion, this is uh, uh, advance notice in writing, which could mean email as well as. Right. I just right. want to make sure we've got the record clear. And you're thinking to the secretary of the Senate. Uh, do you think that would be appropriate at, over? Uh, the director of the uh, Human Resources Committee. I'm just throwing something out there that. Yeah, yeah. I think that. Um, yeah, I think it, since it's on the Senate side, I think it would be appropriate for the Secretary of Senate. Okay. I can. I, I have no problem with that. I just want to make sure we know yeah, what we're yeah. talking about. Gentlemen, uh, you've heard somewhat of the modification. What if I got this correct? It would be under Motion Three. We would take the A. And it would read something to the effect, require Senator Boquist to give at least 12 hours advance notice in writing to the Secretary of the Senate if he intends to be in the Capitol and limit his access. Uh, well, we wouldn't take out the limiting yeah, access. Yeah, I, I would think that would should come out because he <laughs> because could. the next part. Right. So that would be there. And then what we would do, and uh, that uh, OSP's uh, pre uh, presence would be increased. In other words, they would have additional trooper or troopers uh, in the building during the time that uh, Senator Boquist would be uh, in the building. And then, and then include once again that following paragraph. Yes. <coughs> yeah. All right. So 
Uh, I'm going to ask Senator Manning and Senator Knope, uh, you've heard what we've discussed, myself and Senator Olson. Do you have any questions uh, regarding that proposed recommendation? Senator Manning. Uh, the question that I have is uh, Council's recommendation to acknowledge uh, the actual threat is not part of this motion. Uh, I think that I had made something similar to this on, you know, looking at how we make sure that people are feeling comfortable uh, in the building. I I don't particularly care who the uh, the notification comes to. Uh, I think that it is a slight when we say that the uh, Senate president shouldn't receive this. He's not the president of he's the president of the Senate over everybody, and he's going to have to make a call so i think that that's something that we we need to do away with i would prefer for it to go to hr because the secretary of the senate is going to have to communicate with the president of the senate it makes makes no sense to me i think that having uh if he's in the building making sure that uh, we have uh enhanced uh osp you know, we did that in the past, and uh, I'm okay with that. But just bear in mind that this is not a conclusion. This is just an action to take while the investigation or the inquiry proceeds. And so I don't want to get that lost in this. This is not a conclusion at all. Yeah. Can I respond to your statement? I personally agree with Senator Olson that I think the Secretary of the Senate would be the appropriate person in this particular situation. And this is why. We know that there's ongoing potential litigation ongoing now, as well as, uh, let's say, concerns as to different individuals in the building. Senator Boquist has made it very clear from my uh, discussions with him and my readings of his statements. Uh, that he does not believe uh, and sh uh, wants to have contact with HR, specifically Jessica Neely, who is our director. And because there's potential litigation involving her, I don't think that would be the appropriate person that should be receiving the notification. Uh, same thing with the president. Uh, I felt that uh, what Senator Olson has suggested is a person who is uh, an officer of the Senate, uh, who is voted by all members to be in that capacity and she really is kind of our air traffic controller for the uh, the business of the Senate and I think that when you enter in anything into the record into the journals that's where it's going so I personally think Senator Olson is correct and that's why I th I would not be as comfortable uh, putting adversarial uh, interest in contact with each other at this stage. Well, Mr. Chair, I, uh, I, I understand what you're saying, uh, but then potentially we can make anybody adversarial. You know, this is a uh, shape in the battlefield. I don't have a problem with it. You know, that's, that's fine. We can do that. I can live with that. I'm not going to lose any sleep. But, uh, you know, I, I am concerned, again, about what where we're going with this and that we don't get distracted from this is the beginning or part of an ongoing inquiry and and we're not coming up with a conclusion i don't want us to get lost yeah. in that. to me this is this is an intervention is what it really is it's basically the the, the investigation has been ongoing prior to june 19th and because of what happened on June 19th, we've been asked to take steps to ensure uh, safety within the workplace. Uh, clearly, this is not uh, goes to any portion of the merits of any of the reports that outside counsel is, uh, is currently reviewing and potentially would bring forward uh, through uh, the stand or the uh, uh, Rule 27 process for processing uh, reports into complaints, either formal or informal. Mr. Chair, would it would it be inappropriate to ask counsel if she felt that this would be uh, significant enough to ensure a safe workplace for the time being in the interim? Sure, we can have uh, Brenda come back up 
and give her perspective. I mean, to me, I, I, I guess what I'm going to say, well, I'll, let's hear from you first. Uh, I mean, it, I guess what I'm going to say while she's getting situated is it is showing that we have taken all the information that's come before us and we're taking what we think are reasonable steps at this point to ensure uh, safety within the workplace. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator Olson and members. Um, I, I agree with some of the comments. It's a, it's a difficult position, but one that I think is necessary and um, is a balance, right, between the, the senator's ability to do his job and staff's, the importance of the branch ensuring safety for the staff, members, the public, et cetera, has been discussed. So I think the issues are, are being discussed appropriately. Um, it's a million dollar question, isn't it? And I think Senator Olson, you said we can never know, right? We can never know, uh, we can't, you know, we only know what we know. And what we know, at least at the time I issued the June 25th memo is articulated in that memo. And certainly there have been, um, uh, there has been subsequent information. Chair Przonski also referred to the, what I think has been quoted as a double down um, statement in the press. This isn't thinly veiled. This is a real threat. So, I mean, I think that the committee has articulated what the facts are. Um, my only um, response would be, and then I will answer your question, is I, I think it's where I sit, I take a step back. And I'm not so focused on was this a direct communication in the middle of a debate on the Senate floor between Senator Boquist and President Courtney. The way that I need to look at this in advising the branch and that the law looks at it is the effect on the recipients. It's not just what was the intent behind Senator Boquist's statement, how did that affect President Courtney, or how did that affect the Oregon State Police, and that's part of why I did not conduct the interview at the time, because given the urgency, what I believe to be the urgency of the situation, the fact we were not dealing with disputed statements, um, and the fact that the way the law looks at this is not just the effect on the recipient of the statement or the inappropriate conduct, but on those who are also subjected to that in the workplace. Um, so, so that is, is, I just want to make that clear for the record too, because I think some of the comments have been struggling with how do we have a finding without an interview or knowing the full reports, and I understand that, but, but I hope that helps explain where I was coming from. Um, I, I don't believe I had access to the Senator, and even if I did, I think I would issue the same recommendation given what I believe to be an urgency of the timing given the nature of the threat. So the, the question is, is this enough? If you all um, are comfortable that these steps, this is the question I think you need to ask yourself so that I don't think I can answer for you. Um, is this sufficient to ensure that the branch has taken prompt, uh, remedial, effective steps to ensure that during the pendency of the investigation that we are doing what we can to ensure that employees, members, lobbyists, people of the public, anyone who's involved in this in any way as a, as a reporter, as a formal complainant, as a witness, um, is not going to be subjected to ongoing or additional threats of violence, actual violence, intimidation, or hostile work environment. That, that is the, the legal obligation on the branch. I think this is much better than not doing anything. Um, I still feel a little bit differently about the passage of time. I, I, I would look at this more as if, I agree, and, and that is a factor that we have gone a couple weeks, these have not been acted upon, um, we are not in active session, that these are factors to consider, but I also don't know that if we're looking at it from the affected employees, particularly the employees perspective, that that passage of time has really changed their level of of concern. I am very pleased to see the piece about the non-retaliation because from a risk perspective to the branch, that is one of the biggest risks. That through the pendency of the investigation, that there could be um, conduct or comments and these could be in person, they could be via email, via social media, to the media, um, that would put um, the branch at risk that additional comments or conduct from Senator Boquist or others directed towards participants in the process um, could further exacerbate the situation. So I'm very pleased to see that that statement in there about the non-retaliation. I think that should be taken very, very seriously from, a, it, one, it's the right thing to do, but two, from a risk perspective to the branch. That need, that is something you wanna um, keep control over. All right, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may, I might have missed it, but uh, I, I don't believe Ms. Baumgard put her name on the record for this. Oh, thank did, you. Does she have to again? Well. I've, 
Since she's That's the only what, one, but yeah, and essentially we've already gone for <coughs> we're kind of just a continuation. But for the record, if you for the be record, so kind. thank you, Mr. Chair, Brenda Baumgart, Stoll Reeves. Thank All right. You. Thank so you. the only other thing I'm going to say, I think it's worth noting, is that even though some of us would like to have had that ongoing investigation on this interim action to include interviews with uh, Senator Boquist, I think we all know in time those statements were made on the 19th, on the 20th through the up until the 29th. I would say he was not available, if let alone probably wasn't interested in an interview uh, to be gone uh, because. Uh, wasn't here right. and so that would bring it forward and of course your report uh, came to us uh, on the 25th while the uh, walkout was still uh, was still ongoing all right with that we have a motion before us so I'm just going to recapture it so we make certain we have it uh, correct when we vote uh, this would be a recommendation to modify the recommendations of outside counsel based on new information and testimony as follows Require Senator Boquist to give at least 12 hours advance notice in writing to the Secretary of the Senate uh, if he intends to be at the Capitol. Uh, that while he is at the Capitol, there would be an increased presence of OSP troopers or officers uh, while Senator Boquist is in the Capitol. Lastly, uh, and uh, uh, the recommendation would include that Senator Boquist would be advised that applicable law and, uh, un, and, and Rule 27 prohibit him from engaging in any retaliation against any employee or member who may have brought forward or reported concerns and that the Senator Boquist uh, is to be refrained from any action of retaliation against any person who participates in this process. That's the motion that's before us in Mr. clarity. Mr. Chair, uh, just one thing for clarification to make certain that it's on the record, and you did this before, in writing could also mean via email. Yes, it so, could be electronic writing. Okay, thank you. Senator so, Manning. Yeah, you said increase uh, OSP or security presence in the building. Is it in the building or it's on the Senate side? We can have an increase on the House side and it would have no effect. So. Are we talking an increase on the Senate side? Well, I think the increase has got to be across the building. This workplace involves all individuals. And if Senator Boquist, let's say, walks across that demarcation of the Senate into the House, some people would say the lower chamber just for whatever, uh, you know, we don't want it to stop there. Okay. So I think, okay. Does that yep. understand, uh, Claire? Yep. All right. All right, I think we now have the motion. I think everyone has any other questions on it. If not, Patsy, why don't you go ahead and call the roll. Senator Olson? Yes. Senator Mann? Aye. Senator Cano? Aye. Chair presents. Chair votes aye. Uh, motion passes. All right, so with that, we have, I think, concluded our work as what this committee has been asked to do. I want to thank everyone uh, here as committee members first for your time and effort to for make it to the building for this. And for all those who have been participating as uh, uh, observers, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to be here. Uh, we hope that this has been a meaningful experience for you as to how uh, our state government works in uh, moving forward on these type of issues. And I hope that you realize that each and every member here uh, has uh, weighted the effort of determining what is the best course for the branch as it pertains to the workplace being free of any uh, threat of violence or intimidation and that we uh, will not be taking any action at this point regarding any merits of any reports that are currently being investigated. Those will come to us if they come to us at some time in the future. Any other closing comments? Thank you very much. We're adjourned.